In this instruction I have given you much food for thought. I have emphasized an aspect of scientific esoteric healing which has not before been brought to the attention of students. I would have you grasp the general picture and get the outlines of process clear. I would have you study the relation between the healer and the patient as he passes out of the stage of just loving and sending out love or of seeing the patient in the light of love, and goes on to the scientific work of augmenting the patient's own spiritual energy. He thus enables him to affect his own cure, consciously or unconsciously. Therefore, the healer, the patient and the reservoir of spiritual energy, plus the scientific process of bringing all three into a flow of a healing rapport. This is done via the center concerned in the equipment of the patient, the corresponding center in the equipment of the healer, and the direction by an act of the will of the healer or of the healing group of the united streams of required specific energy to the area disease. This is usually done via the related gland, though it is not always so. Ponder on these things and see, if you can, the simplicity of the process which is based on loving intent, which isolates the specific area in which the trouble exists, which identifies itself with the spiritual center of energy in the patient, and which then applies and directs the fused and blended energy. Effects of understimulation and overstimulation of the centers. We have been for some time studying the centers and their relation to the dense physical body. We have also noted the areas which are conditioned by these centers and the mediating work of the ductless glands. We have seen that two major predisposing causes of physical trouble, arising within the physical organism, are the understimulation or the overstimulation of the centers. There are also, as you will recall, three diseases which are inherent in substance itself, and which therefore create basic predispositions within the human body, cancer, syphilis and tuberculosis. With these three we are not at this time healing. But the condition of the center produces, basically, all the difficulties, permitting entrance to infections and germs which might not otherwise cause trouble, producing those situations where the diseases inherent in the form nature can be fostered, and making undesirable tendencies powerful. We might consequently lay down the premise, one which the medical profession will later accept in its entirety, that diseases which are self-engendered, if I may use so curious and inadequate a phrase, and which are not the result of contagion or infection or of accidents, are caused by the failure, the limitation, the deficiency or the excess, and by the overdevelopment or the underdevelopment of the endocrine system. This ductless glandular system, via the hormones, affects every part of the physical. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 125 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Organism, via the bloodstream and it may therefore be truly positive that when the ductless glands are perfectly balanced and functioning correctly, there will be no disease areas in the body. The bloodstream will then be kept also in perfect condition. The key to perfect physical health is that it is expressed by a master of the wisdom can consequently be directly traced to his full control of the centers, to their balanced state of energy reception and distribution, and to the effect which they produce upon the entire ductless glandular system.
By this means every area of the body is properly supplied with the needed forces and is thus kept in perfect condition. Coming midway between the centers and the corresponding endocrine glands, and acting as the agent for the distribution of energy, is the nervous system. Here, however, difficulty is usually to be found. There is a lack of adequate flow of energy. The energy distributed by its means to the body, via the centers, is unevenly distributed. Some centers receive an undue supply, others receive an inadequate amount. Some centers are still unawakened, and therefore are non-receptive, others are prematurely developed and transmit too much force to the areas they govern. In esoteric medicine and its philosophical interpretation, which is in the last analysis the effective and practical application of the known facts, it is the cerebral spinal aspect which conditions and governs the entire nervous system, for it is by means of this aspect and through its agency that the centers work and affect the bodily organism, supplying the body with the needed vital energy. Thus the nervous system becomes eventually responsive, via the seven centers, to the seven major energies or the seven ray forces. In no human being, except the master, are all the centers properly awakened and functioning in a balanced manner, nor are they properly related through intensive radiation. In no human being is the nervous system directly responsive to the centers. There are two reasons for this, and both are related to the cerebrospinal system. 1. The head center is not yet awakened, or is only slowly being developed, as the disciple submits himself to training. 2. The flow of energy through the head to the centers of the spine is uneven, owing to the fact that the inflow is uneven, and that the etheric web, between the centers, permits as yet only a very little energy to flow through to all the centers. It must be remembered that the life of the centers is founded, in the initial stage, upon the inherent life of the organism itself, with the focus of the emanating life to be found in the center at the base of the spine. This is a point oft forgotten by esotericists. This basic center is the one through which the life of matter itself works. This is the life or energy of the Holy Spirit aspect, the third aspect. Through its life each atom in the body is fed. This process of animating the substance of the physical form is started in the prenatal stage. After birth, this type of force is aided and paralleled by the inflow of planetary prana or vital energy from the planetary life itself, via the spleen. This is the essential relating organ between the inherent life of matter itself, as present in the microcosm, and the inherent life in the planet. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 126 A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing as evolution proceeds, there is gradually added to this inherent force an inflow of qualified energy which is expressive of the consciousness aspect of divinity, and indicates to the esotericist the state of awareness of the man and also the ray type of his soul. This inflow comes from the second divine aspect, from the soul of the indwelling Christ. It might therefore be stated and then the two head centers that 1. The Ajna center, or the personality center, focused between the eyebrows and conditioning the pituitary body, is related to the entire life of the integrated threefold organism.